Do you want to know how to build a larger app with Swift UI that uses the newest, coolest features, has a very complex UI, and uses a REST API with multiple network requests that we fire depending on which screens we show? Then this is a good place to be because this is the first part of a series where I make an app with the iTunes Search API, and I'm basically cloning parts of the iTunes Store app that uses this API. So there's a total of seven parts if I didn't change my mind again. Some of the technologies that I'm going to use are REST API, so I need to do network requests. We need to work with URLs and queries. We need to decode JSONs. Obviously, we work in Swift UI, and I'm going to use MVVM because then I also can separate my network layer and have some nicer error handling and less code repetition. I didn't include unit tests, but it would be easy to add with this pattern of MVVM and network layer. From the visual parts, you can see here the example. So this is just um, one of the tabs. I'm going to use a search text field where you can where you can type and start searching. So right now I'm only searching here for albums. We are going to search for three different types and I can actually switch between what data I want to show with the speaker. So I can show songs and movies. And you see, I'm actually firing the requests when I change this selection. I can also show all three different types of data in the all section. So here I'm not just using a list. I'm using a B stack with three different sections inside and each of them is a horizontal scroll view. So we have here this more simple lazy H stacks. I'm also loading this images with an async image. This is very convenient, showing also these loading indicators. The same styling here for these movies. And for the songs, we use a little bit more advanced of a lazy H grid. This is not the same as a grid. You can scroll again. If you press on one of the see all buttons, we see again this list style. This is the same as I would go in the song tab, except that we are pushing it with a navigation link. So again, from the all section, we can push to see the list of all the songs. We can scroll. This is scrolling and loading more and more. Probably need to load. Okay, I guess I'm at the end of the list. So we have this navigation links. One time when I press here on see all, and also when I select one of the songs, and it's actually doing quite a lot of things in this case, because when it has the song, I need to do two more network requests, one for the album of the, that is shown up here, and then for all of the other songs. And the other thing I need to do is, as you see here, this is the song I actually tapped on. And so we need to scroll to this view. This is a very similar view than for the albums. So in this case, I have the information of the album and I need to fetch the information of all the songs. So this is then shown in this scroll view. And because it looks like a table, we are going to use one of the newer features, which is the grid view, because then I get this really nice alignment of this column is these numbers are aligned to each other on the trailing edge. The title of the song is on the leading. These are center aligned. So it's a very nice way of getting this polished looking UI. There's a lot of views that we're going to be able to reuse. We have to be smart about how to organize this and extract components. If you want to jump ahead and see the code, I linked the GitHub repository in the description box. I added a lot of commits. I mean, not a lot. I added some commits. You can also get the project at any of the steps. So at each of these tutorial steps, I added a link to the repository in the states of the beginning of the tutorial. So you can start the same as I do. Not sure if that made sense, but anyway, you can get the proper files for this project. You can look at the final and just jump in wherever you want and which part is interesting to you. And the way this tutorial series is built, I start with a very basic app. So in this part now, we're going to first have to look at the um, documentation of the iTunes search API, which is not great, but good enough for playing around. And I'm also showing you screenshots of the actual native app. And then we are going to start with basic network requests. So by the end of this section, you will be able to search these album types 
making a basic request and showing this list. And then in the next part, we look at how to, how to integrate the search bar, how to look for different types, how to do this infinite scrolling. So how do you fetch more? And then in the last part, it's more interesting to see how to do this navigation links and then fetch something when you open a link and then also this programmatic scrolling. So you're going to build up from a very basic implementation to a more and more complex app. Now let's jump into the design specification and start. The iTunes search API is used by the iTunes store app. And I went ahead and did some, um, made some screenshots from the app. And this is a sketch artboard. I like to use this just because I can zoom in and place a lot of stuff inside. So I, we still have an overview of what's going on because there's quite a few screens. The tab that I'm interested in the most is the search tab. And when you the first time open this, you see here the search bar on top. And obviously the first time you open this, there's nothing to search. So for the empty state, because we are, don't have anything to search for currently, for the empty state, they give some search suggestions. I don't use this, so don't judge me about the, the suggestions it's giving me. Obviously, as a German, I get Rammstein. When you press on one of these buttons, so in this case, I pressed on the scorpion button. And this places the search term in the search bar and then triggers the network request to fetch all this data. You can search for different types or kinds like songs, albums. And when you press here on this more option, they have like, I think eight others. And one of them is movies. So then you see different sections like here, songs, albums and movies, also music videos, but the one we are going to look at is this three songs, albums and movies. And you choose to only search for songs or for only albums. So with this picker, you tap on here albums. The screen changes, so we get a different kind of list. So in this first part, I'm going to make it a lot easier and just focus on one part of it, which is this album screen. So I'm not going to show here actually this picker. I'm only having the search bar and we're only looking for albums with this search term. And then as we progress, we can add searches for songs and searches for movies. So we can also build these three other search screens. And then in the, in the all options, we can then also have a look at how to do this multiple sections and for each of the sections trigger different network requests. Okay. So going back to the one I wanted to do. So we have to check the API for the albums, how to fetch them, how to compose the URL with what query items. If you don't know anything about APIs and you need an introduction, I suggest you to go to one of my other tutorials where I go through the basics. I will link this also in the description so you can find this. It's just going to show you the documentation for the iTunes search API. Unfortunately, this is not the best documented API and it has its quirks, but it doesn't have any authorization. So we don't need a developer key and we don't need to make our users log in. We can simply search this API. So you can use this API to search for content in the iTunes store. This is the one I just showed you. The app store, iBook store and the Mac app store. So we can have a look for apps, books, movies, podcasts, music, music videos, audiobooks, and TV shows. Okay. Now I go in the search. This is an example for a new URL. So the base URL is itunes.apple.com and they have two endpoints search and lookup. Maybe I just go in these in the, directly in the examples. Okay. So in the search, this is a URL that would look for all content from this person, Jack Johnson. So we would use the search endpoint and then use a query parameter for term of Jack Johnson. This will return all different kinds of content like music and podcast. If you're only interested in a certain entity, like what we want to do albums, then it's this example where they use another search query for entity music videos. We would set entity album. When we do this, we get an array back of albums. And I think the default is maximum of 50. 
If you say you want to change the number to a different limit, because maybe it's less search results actually available, we can use another search query item, which is limits. And in this case, they use 25. So maybe I just click on these and then it downloaded. Just need to open this. It downloaded this JSON file. Just need to make this bigger. So in this case, I got the search result of 25 and then the results array is actually what we get. So in this case, it's a kind of song. You get the artist ID. Here you see the artist name of the Jack Johnson. So this is what we were searching for. And some other information we go through in a minute, also in a little bit nicer formatted way, because this is quite a lot of information. Okay, so this is if you have a specific term that you're looking for, which I, if I go back to the um, screen that we want to build, if you want to search for this term, but we only want to get albums, entities of type album back, then this is the way to go. We just need to um, basically use this URL composition. The other one that is there that we're going to not use now, but I can already show you just so you know when to use this. When you tap in the app on one of these albums, it, it opens another link showing you more details about this album. This is the album detail. So again, here on the top, it's pretty similar to this list. You see the album cover image, the title and some more information. And down here under songs, we see the list of all these songs. So this information, the list of these songs is not included in the request that we sent for fetching all these albums. So we need to request them additionally. When the user taps on this button, when this data view comes, we need to fetch this list of songs belonging to this album. So what we have to take as the ID of this album, or which we request by its collection ID. And this kind of requesting something by ID is done with the lookup endpoint. So this is this tab. Um, okay, we can look up the artist. It's actually very similar to this case. Look up the um, five most recent songs for this artist ID. So instead of this, actually we don't use the AMG artist ID. So we can say we want to have the entity of type songs. So the songs that have the collection ID or the ID that we have for the album and get them back. We don't need to use in this case, this limit or the sort of recent, which would give us the, um, you can also search by most recent, do some kind of sorting like most recent or most popular. But unfortunately I cannot show you a lot of examples because it's not included in this API. So we mostly focus on the searches and check out how we can query depending on different parameters. Okay. <laughs> it all starts with a brand new project. And I'm using here the template for iOS and single app because we are going to focus on iOS. Then next, and I just need to store this somewhere and create a name. So this is my iTunes search app using the interface of Swift UI and press on next create. I'm going to create a couple of groups to pre-structure what I have to do. So parts of what we have to build is the view pro actually. So I'm just creating this group and name it view. Then I actually have to fetch the data from the server. So I'm going to create a new group and I'm going to do this in the view models. So I'm naming this view model, which also reminds me that I need to have this kind of model definition because we are getting JSON from the server and we need to create something which we can work in Swift with. So we need to create our data, uh, our models. So this is a model group. And the one model file that I actually have to do in this section is a albums type. So I can already create here a file, call this album. This needs to be a Swift file. In order to create this file, <laughs> I'm going to use a, a service, especially these JSONs are a little bit long. So what I'm going to do is I first actually need to have some sample JSON. And if I go back to the search, so what I want to have, no, wait, this is not it, is something like, no, this was not downloading again. <laughs> so this is the uh, sample URL that I wanted to use. And maybe I'm going to paste this in the view model that I actually want to use this with. So this is the Swift file. 
this is my album list because I'm using this in a view that I have an album list list view model this is a class album list view model I'm going to paste here the URL in this is also useful because then I can remember so this is basically the search term that I get from my search text field but the entity is not music video I want to have album so in the construction, uh, construct a search, they have here mm, list of, for the entity, the type of result you want to return. And then they have a available entities table. The entity types that I want to look at are movie, album, and song. So this is the three uh, string values I actually have to place in my URL. Okay, so for example, the three searches that we would do is searching for the search term Jack Johnson and the type is album, song or movie. And maybe we also take advantage of the limits so I don't get super long JSON files. So this is this limit. So if you want to search for only five of these albums, add a query parameter of limit. So the URL in total, I start with the base URL, itunesapple.com. This is the endpoint. We can either have search or lookup endpoints. All the, um, what kind of things you want to be more specific of searching are the query items are listed after a question mark. And you see here, there's always the equal sign. So that it's a key value pair basically of for term, I want to have Jack Johnson. And the next query term is for the entity type, I want to have album. And actually I want to have my results type and um, my results array only of maximum a limit of five. You can have multiple of these queries to specify what you really want to look for. So if this is correct, I can take this URL and paste it in a browser. And then it's downloading another JSON. So this is much shorter and you see the result is actually five. If I increase the font size again, so the result is actually five. And in this case, my collection type is album and the artist name is Jake Johnson because that's what we were actually looking for. How do I make this a little bit easier for myself to read? I'm just going to copy the whole thing and then use one of the formatters which is app.quicktype.io. It has basically three columns. On the left, we can paste our JSON in. You have to choose the source type. And I have here a JSON. On the right side, you can specify what you actually are using this for. So in my case, I definitely want to have a Swift language. You can also get the information in Kotlin. That's probably useful if you also want to do an Android app for this. Go back to Swift. Then you can say, do I want to have a struct or a class? You see it's changing the code, the generated class or struct in Swift for us. So I go back to struct and actually it's using here this welcome text because um, you have to specify this is, it doesn't know what to name this. So this would be an album result and that one it updates it here. So this one is, has two properties, result, uh, results counts, how many results we had, five here and the results array which is of type result so this is actually a album I guess we have to edit this in Xcode and then down here you get all the properties that are included so for example there are artist name collection name so this is the album name the collection censored name then we have some IDs so on the artist ID, the collection ID. So this is the one that I'm going to use for fetching the songs. We also get URLs. This is nice because it's the, I need some images to show. Where do I have this JSON now? I need to look for artwork URL 60. Just need to copy something from this. So if you use that URL, it will show you the um, image that is attached to this URL. 
So we can download these images and show in our list. This is interesting also because it's two different resolutions, 60 and 100, depending on how large the image actually is. For example, here on the screen that I have, these images for the album are this size compared to on the album detail, then we would need bigger image. Or the smallest images are actually here for the songs. So these are much smaller images. And we can decide on, depending on which circumstances, which screen we are on, which images we want to use. Although I think 100 is not the biggest image, but for testing purposes, for practicing purposes, this is quite nice. Then we have the price together with the currency here. We have the release date, the genre. So there's quite a few information in there. You can customize more of the auto-generated code on the side by saying here plain types only. So now it would rem that removes the coding keys. Um, but maybe we want to change some of these names. It's just nice to have this directly. For example, here if you press explicit code key values in codable types, there's also some other task extensions, but this is adding a little bit too uh, much. Maybe down here if you want to make them vars, if you want to change them, which we are not going to do. We're only displaying this information to the user. The user is not allowed to change this. Or here make all properties optional because maybe it's not included in all the JSONs. And this is something we have to actually look into or probably getting, going to get some errors. So I'm not going to do that. And I can just copy this whole thing into my albums file. The only thing I have to change here, this is not the result, this is the album type and this is album. Okay, you don't need to keep all of this information. We can also delete some of this, but maybe since I don't really know, let's just keep it. The same thing uh, you can do for the other two types. I'm just going to do that for song and movie. In this case, I'm just using these URLs differently. I'm doing the same. I'm fetching this JSON, pasting it into QuickType, and then copy this to my song Swift file, where I need to rename everything now to song. That was in the other one with um, album. And then the last one is the movie. This has a little bit more information <laughs> because there's also some kind of description, long description of what the movie is about. And pasting this in my movie file, changing this to movie, movie, movie. Okay, this mm, should look all right. For now, this is a good first step just to make it really fast, but we still need to work on if all of these optionals are correct. Okay, and to test this, I'm going to use the album view model, uh, which I have to make as an observed object for Swift UI. So the main goal here is actually to get the album. So this is an array of albums for a search term. So I need to have a, two properties the, that have to be at published var search term. This is a string. For example, this would be Jack Johnson. And then for this, I would want to see a albums array. Maybe now I'm just going to have here an empty array. So we need to have this kind of fetch request. So I need to create a function that actually fetches something. So we can test this. So this is fetch albums for a search term. This is a string and we are not going to return anything from this function because we are directly actually setting when we get some albums, we're going to directly set it on this property so we can show it in the, uh, on the screen that we actually have not created yet, but soon. Okay, now let's do the fetch request. And for this, I'm using URL session. This is very convenient. URL session dot shared dot data task. And we need to give here a, either a request or a URL, but in this case, I only 
In our case, it's always a GET request, so it, it's enough to just specify here the URL. So obviously you need to have a URL. This is a URL. And to make this very simple, now I'm using a string because this is this string that I already um, tried out. When I do this URL from string, it's actually an optional. And the data task here, this is not an optional. So I need to make sure I don't proceed to the data task if it's nil. I'm using a guard statement. So guard, if I can do this, I can proceed else. I'm going to return directly here and don't try downloading anything. So this is return. And then I can give this at this point when I have the data task, this is not an optional anymore. Or I know I have a new URL. I tap on the completion handler and we get three things back. The actual data, if there's something, this is optional. The URL response that tells us if everything goes well. And then the error, if this is an error that comes from the URL session. For example, if you don't have internet connection, this error would not be nil until you user doesn't have internet. Okay, so we have to check which of these things are actually there. So this is a data, a response and an error. So if let maybe we just check the error. So print error and then error dot localized description. Else if let data equal data. So usually you wouldn't have an error and a data. If I have a data, we know that this is not just a data, it's actually a JSON. So we can use a JSON decoder. Okay, I can start by the, and this is a JSON decoder. So I need to generate one. And the function that is interesting is decode from something that conforms to decodable protocol or the type. And that's why I, all of our types are decodable or actually they're codable, which, is, which means that it's both decodable and encodable. We can from the JSON create a Swift type. So this is the type, what did I choose? A relevant results type self. So this is, and the data. Now it's complaining because it can throw, we can fail, this decoding can fail, most likely. In order to deal with this, we can use try. I want to know what's going on. I want to actually get the information about the errors. So this is the result. And in order to get this, I use a do catch block. So do try to decode this. If you have a problem, catch the error. And I'm going to print here decoding error of error dot localized description. So these are two different errors. This is the, the first one was from the URL session. So maybe I'm just going to write here URL session just to remind myself what this is actually doing. And then I have this result. It's a good point that it reminds me I do have the result. I never did anything with it. So the results has one property, which is the results. So this is the album array that I wanted to put on self.albums. So now I am taking the results from my fetch request and place it on my published var albums. If this is going well, we should have an array to show on the screen. Okay, maybe I'm just going to create a first screen so we see something. So in the view folder, I'm going to show, I'm going to create a Swift UI view that I name album, album list view. And I obviously need to now use my view model because there's the data that I want to show. Add states object because it's a view model needs to, and I want to continuously use this. It needs to be a state object var view model and I initialize this as a album list view model. Okay, now I wanted to just show here very easily the list of all these items. So this is a list from, okay, it doesn't have, it starts to have too many initializers. Okay, just using the data. Okay, maybe I don't use the uh, default. So this is using the view. The first property is the view model, the array I want to show, which is the albums. And the closure, I get the, each album in. And I can show here a text. Maybe we start by that album 
collection name. Now I get an error telling me that album needs to confirm the identifiable. Otherwise I need to provide an ID. If we go to the album, we actually have something that is very close to an ID, which is this collection ID. So this is the ID of this album where I can identify this album. So first I make this conform to identifiable. Now I need to actually have a property with the correct ID. Yeah, it now looks for a property with the name ID. And the way I'm going to do this, maybe I don't really like to have this bunched up so much. So I need an ID that is an int or that is supposed to be an int. I mean the formatting. So this ID and I'm using the collection ID. So this is the value that it uses in the... So this is the ID. This is the property in the JSON file that I take and assign to my ID property. Okay, I'm guessing there's still something wrong. Just let's run and let's check this and go through all of the error messages. Going back to my album list view. This is now showing the list of these albums, but I actually never started this factory. I never called the fetch request function. So I'm going to use the on appear here and tell my view model to fetch albums for the view models search term that I actually defined. This album list view I never used somewhere in my app. So maybe in the content view in its body, I'm going to do that. So in vstack search, and then I show here my album list view because I forgot to start the network request. So this is dot resume. I actually never started this request. Part of my problem why I get this error message is because I used here the localized description. So this is something that you would be able to show to the user. So I should remove this to get the debug description. And I'm just going to read key not found collection ID in results. Ah, yes. Okay. Let's just go through them. Did I do that wrong? Ah, it's actually a small D. Okay. Try again. Decoding error type mismatch. <laughs> so apparently we have the wrong one. So expected to decode double, but we found a string data instead. So the release date um, in this JSON. Yeah, we need to format this. And right now I'm just going to keep here a string. Release date, and it's not a date. We're just going to use here a string. And we are successful. So we are get <laughs> we're getting here five results for the search term. Okay, now let's, instead of using here this fixed search term all the time, change this to something that the user can add. So in my album list view, I need to actually add here search text field. So I can add the searchable view modifier and then I need to connect the property that is stored in the search text field to wherever I want to use this for my fetch request. So this is here a binding to my view models search term. So now the search term is placed in this property. I'm not going to use your placements. We're not using any placement stuff. With this change, I will not start a fetch request in the on appear. So this is going. In order to actually see this in the canvas, now there's nothing. <laughs> actually, the search searchable is in a navigation view. So this needs to be in a navigation view. And we can also add here a navigation title of search albums. Now you can see my default uh, Jack Johnson. <laughs> and we go into the album list view model. Ah, and I forgot actually a very big problem. <laughs> so this is a thread error. When, <laughs> when you have, when you get something back from the URL session, it's on the, on a background thread and this album property is used on the main thread. So I need to switch when I do this, when I do some execution here, I need to actually explicitly say that we are going to do this on the main queue, dispatch queue dot main dot async, which means that whatever I give here is done on the main queue. 
and this error should disappear okay next time but the actual thing that i want to do is start my network request when my search term changes so there's a couple of things you can do this you could call this function in the did set but i'm using a little bit of combine here so i have to set this up in the init and i need to have a subscription property which i need a combine for so subscriptions and this is a set of any cancelables so now in the initializer i actually want to trigger i want to create a data stream that automatically triggers fetching these albums every time my search term changes so i need to access the publisher which is dollar search term and then in the sync i get the term and we can call the fetch albums for term in order to do this continuously i need to store this data stream in the subscription array so this is subscriptions and now it's complaining because i'm actually here in a um, closure so you would need to use here self and i use a weak self so weak self to not create any reference cycle self dot self question mark because we now might not have access to self okay and now maybe we now i'm going to remove jack johnson's as a default value so we start with an empty string and i can run this now I am triggering this fetch albums, but I never here used in my URL request this search term. So I'm going to replace this Jack Johnson with the search term. One thing to remember is that when you saw here this request, the spacing was replaced by a plus. So this kind of formatting we're going to do a little bit later when we talk about query items and query composition. So then you don't need to worry about this. It's done automatically. Okay, now I try. It is actually already triggering one request uh, because of this data stream. And I can remove this by saying here, drop the first one. Okay, this was not so interesting. And now I can here tap on the search text and search for John. And you see every time I do this, it's actually updating this list because it, every time I type in the search text, it changes this property, which then starts one of the fetch requests. If you want to um, not overdo this, you can use a debounce. So this means that only after a certain time when you stop typing, we're actually searching for something. So this is debounce in for the time period in seconds of maybe we do half a second. So wait half a second before you wait half a second for not having any more input and only then trigger the request on the run loop don't mean okay in seconds and the other thing is maybe we don't have here a limit of five maybe we want to show a lot more so let's create here just a property limit of type int and we just use 20. so in this request i am using this limit now it's creating a request with 20 results. So this is John. And I have another problem. Uh, yeah, this is because some of them, they just don't exist for all of them. So this is AMG artist ID. So AMG artist ID, and I'm going to make this optional. If you, if you know that some of these results don't have this property, making them optional is actually quite okay. And I think we have maybe a problem with our request <laughs> because maybe there's no results. And maybe I'm going to also do the same for artist view URL. This is an optional string. I mean, usually if the API is properly documented, um, they will tell you which ones are optional and which ones are not. Yeah, I suppose there's maybe no results. Okay, just a little bit of formatting. <laughs> uh, I don't actually need to have this search title here. So in the content view, I can remove the VStack and we're just simply using the album list view here. And uh, I don't like this group style. So the list has some styling properties. So you can use a list 
style and the one that is using now i think is grouped and we probably can use plain just make some list so now it's not these bordered boxes anymore it's very plain this is the end of the first section where we created a swift ui app with a basic network request the upcoming sections we have to add here these images and it takes a little bit of formatting also when i here press on delete i want to go back to the initial screen so when we have nothing in the search text i actually want to show this list instead and with buttons when you press on these buttons we want to change the search text and from there on make our way to create also this detail view this is coming next you can find the link to the next tutorial here if it's already up otherwise don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss any of these tutorials please hit the like button that helps me a lot and will show this video to more people thanks for watching until next time bye